Hello, everybody. Thank you for sticking around after Table Takes today. We have another special Gen conversation for you all. Uh, <laughs> That's a good pun. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very subtle way of getting that across. Uh, <laughs> last week, we talked about how to play role-playing games online, especially for folks who are not used to that, uh, who might be just more comfortable playing in person. And Gen Con is kind of the home for almost every kind of game. So we wanted to make sure that we spent some time talking about playing board games online, which is something that I don't think as many people know is actually remarkably well supported these days. So we're joined by a number of guests. First, we have Paula from uh, our very own show, This Game Gets Dicey on Gen Con TV on Wednesdays. Woo where you play a game online with Matthew, who you're in LA and he is in London, I believe, right? In England, he's just north of London. He's in England, okay. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, you know, opposite sides of the, of the world, you two are still yes. playing board games together and you're yes. still having a ton of fun. Yes. Uh, you also have uh, this, uh, Things Get Dicey, um, and you have a, a, a YouTube channel, uh, a podcast, uh, so you're working on a whole lot of content that way. Yeah. We have Ivan from Tabletopia, who handles the PR and marketing uh, from the very beginning of the, the launching of that project. We have Ian. Yeah, nice who's to the, see you all here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have Ian, Ian from Happy Baobab and yes. Board Game Arena. That's it. Hello. Hey there. <laughs> and finally, we have Robert, who is the main developer for Tabletop Playground, which is a new... Uh, platform to play a lot of these games online that is that is just recently launched so we're excited to welcome you to the online board gaming family robert so thank you for joining us as well hey everyone thanks for the invite great so um we want to kind of talk about you are a big board gamer fan you're watching the show you've probably played some board games you uh, are not able to go out and do your game night with your friends. So we want to help talk you through a few different options that you can use to keep game night still in your life. Um, still play board games with your friends, maybe play board games with your friends that you haven't had a chance to in a long time. But at the very least, still kind of keep that regular game going. And my first thought on how to do that was to think about how you might find some of these games. And one of the key things that a lot of people might want to understand is that there's two approaches to playing board games online right now. And one are individual apps that are designed for that specific game. They could be mobile apps, desktop apps, web apps, um, console apps, or something like that. But this would be the Carcassonne app on Xbox or the Ticket to Ride game on mobile or something like that. The other approach are larger platforms that are often platforms mixed with marketplaces where you get an account and maybe you pay, maybe it's free, but you have a wide selection of games that you can choose from. And many of our representatives are from that. So why don't we start with, um, start with Ian. Um, do you want to talk about, you know, maybe the approach that you take to games? Yeah, what do you, um, what do you want to know about it? Like we are a website that is running um, board games since um, something close to ten years, I guess. Mm -hmm. It was made by two guys from the eighties, and uh, they were like leaving their job to do that for a living. Oh, and sure. now it's running quite well. And because of course of the COVID nineteen, we had like like plenty of people coming in. So I'm here to join the team so we are only three people writing mm -hmm. and uh trying to bring the best of the game we can that's it well how, do, how does your platform work um so if i want to play a board game on board game arena um how do i go about it i, I think we will have like the same sort of scheme for each website like you just get in you get your account set up like you just set up uh, your email your password mm -hmm. you can log in using facebook or google and then you click play, you choose uh, if you want to play turn-based or real-time. And you choose simple game or, game or tournament. And then you choose your opponents. 
if you have some friends, you can play with them. If you don't have any friends, we will find them for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You click on the game and you can play it like with many different settings. Like for example, for Carcassa, if you want to play with some spe specific extensions, you can play with them. No problem with it. And that's it, you play. And if you choose real time, you, you have some time to play your turn. And if it's turn based, you have like plenty of time to play, like maybe one or two day per turn, depending on the settings of the table. But that's it. And you can win points and trophies and things like that and brag about it. So, yeah. <laughs> and so, Board Game Arena is entirely web based, right? There's no app or desktop application or anything like that? Actually, the, the tech is uh, web-based, so it's working on every browser. We have a lot of people playing from the uh, game console right now, like we have a lot of people playing from the PS4, mm -hmm. from the web browser. Um, and we have an app uh, for the phone and tablets, but that's just kind of an uh, encapsulated website that's inside because everything is working through the website anyway. So that's it. And and accounts are generally free, and you have a variety of games that you can play for free. Oh, but you have a yeah. There's a there's a premium account I think that you need for some selection of games or to get around wait times and stuff like that at times. Yeah, you're right. Actually, actually uh, the website is totally free. Uh, the, okay. the the main uh, the main thing is that um, we only allow the premium members to open the tables for some games. Like if you are a player that is not paying, actually, you are playing for free, you can join a table that is opened by a premium member. The, um, the philosophy we have behind Board Game Arena is not to make a money, not that money. It's mostly to, to have people that could afford uh, to pay for a premium account, uh, to pay for the free player to join. So right. that's pretty much it. Like we, you have many players that couldn't pay for it. And so the players that could pay have bonuses like opening tables and many different, many more things like opening the uh, voice chat and video chat. Uh, but uh, it's only allowed to the premium so they can invite free players. And so the, that's how we, we are like founding the website. Like premium pl players are paying for the free players to, to play. So like, it's kind of the like the idea that you would buy a physical board game and then you would bring it and your friends would play. And exactly. They could play even if they didn't buy the game. I exactly. make everyone pay me money to play my <laughs> board games. That I <laughs> how, how does that work out for you? I've got to. I mean, I've got to somehow fund this <laughs> habit. Yeah. I charge like a cover. <laughs> yep. Yep. You get that for me then, like in some states or something like that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Qu uh, questionably legal there. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't do that. Of course I don't. I, uh, mm. So Ivan, uh, how about Tabletopia? Do you want to talk about how that platform is set up and how people kind of access and play games there? Uh, sure thing. Uh, it will not take much time because it is pretty similar to the thing uh, with Board Game Arena. We have the same subscription approach uh, when we have a basic free level. Uh, so everyone just go to the website, they register, create an account uh, using their email. They can use also their Steam account, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I think that's all, but that's more than enough. Uh, so they... what what you're allowing twitter accounts uh yeah I, i'm just tweeting right now really? <laughs> 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 to our followers that they can join this conversation i think th that's a great thing you know uh at one stream you can see like three different platforms and uh I can also talk about Tabletop Simulator because <laughs> they are not here right now. <laughs> uh, so to continue with all the things, uh, you mm -hmm. log in. Uh, we have basically, right now, we already have more than 900 games. And almost all of these games have free uh, setup. For example, let's say that if you want a setup for two players would be free, but setup for five players with all extensions or DLCs would be for premium only. Uh, so you can buy this premium subscription 
there are two levels, silver and gold. Uh, one is $5, another is $10 per month. Uh, the thing that the gold account uh, allows you to invite any number of free users. So it is perfect if you want to host uh, a gaming night. It is just mm -hmm. as easy as uh, you will have a gold account, you share the link uh, with your friends, and they do not even need to create account on Tabletopia. They can just uh, use a guest authorization. They select an avatar from the gallery. They uh, type their name and they are in the game. And um, I can add that we have a browser version, we have application for iOS and Android, and it works pretty the same as Board Game Arena. It is an application that is a browser inside. So uh, that helps us to make uh, cross, -make, cr cross matchmaking. For example, you can create a game on an iPad and invite people from Steam and from web to join you. So it is like the whole environment. The only thing that there are some restrictions because of the performance of tablets on Android, on the, an iOS. So not all games are playable on iOS. Uh, if you will download an app, you will see that there are not 900 games, but something like what, 190 games, I suppose something between 80 and 90, let's say like this. Or better to download an app and to check it right now if I'm right or not. <laughs> yeah, uh, and we have- How many games show up when you open that up on your iPad? Yes, let's count together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we have a, a Steam application as well. So on Steam, we are competing with Tabletop Simulator. On web, we are competing with Board Game Arena. Um, so but, the, uh, the, yeah. the other thing that I've seen Tabletopia used for a lot is for Kickstarters that want to allow potential yeah. backers a chance to kind of see the game in action before they back. Um, and that's kind of a really interesting, exciting tool that you have developed. Um, do you, uh, can you talk about like um, how many people have taken advantage of that or, or whether that was difficult to kind of put in place or... Sure thing. Uh, you know, as we, as, as a project, Tabletopia have started with Kickstarter. It was mm -hmm. five or six years ago. And uh, when you're involved in all these things, you understand how valuable any support to a Kickstarter project might be. And so at this point, we were attending different conferences. Uh, we were talking with influencers. We were showing our platform to publishers. Uh, and it was very helpful for us. And we thought that it would be great to give something to other Kickstarter projects. And uh, we personally uh, buy a lot of games from Kickstarter. So our shelves are full of games that were born because of Kickstarter. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to help as much as we can. Uh, so uh, we're helping with game implementation on uh, Tabletopia. Uh, we can fine-tune it, uh, we can help with like some useful links, but we can also like help uh, in direct implementation. Uh, then we create announcements in our news feed, in our social media. And recently we've started again to do live streams uh, with mm -hmm. board game designers and publishers. And we decided uh, to make it weekly, uh, but with an additional stream for Kickstarter projects. So it will awesome. help to... Uh, show the game uh, to potential backers. And it is also connected to the thing that um, lots of people prefer physical gaming. It's mm -hmm. not a thing right now, but in general, I'm totally on this side things as well. I like to play with my friends in person. Uh, and uh, Tabletopia and the other platforms are pretty mm -hmm. good uh, when you can try the game and understand, if, will it be a good fit to your company? Uh, you won't understand it until you play it. And we got a lot of feedback, like, I tried this game on Tabletopia, it totally worth like its money, I backed it on the Kickstarter. Uh, and I think that is what Kickstarter publishers uh, are looking for. They're looking for effective platforms that might uh, showcase their game, show highlight the benefits of the game, give the opportunity to give this first 
uh, feeling of the game and then to support it on the Kickstarter. Awesome. What about you, Robert? Um, so you, uh, you know, your tabletop playground is new um, to this, this kind of scene. So how does tabletop playground work? What are you hoping you'll be able to do with it in the future? And what kind of inspired you to, to enter at this point? Mm -hmm. So um, it works a bit different from, uh, from Board Game Arena and Tabletopia in that you don't need an account. Um, you get the game on Steam. Um, once we are fully launched, um, you'll pay for the game initially, um, but there's no subscription model. And uh, right now we are running an open beta that you can just join for free. Um, and then you do have the game, you play it over Steam, and we have a um, collaboration with another service, uh, mod.io, where you can upload your games or find games um, made by other people. And actually one big focus uh, of Tabletop Playground is also to allow people to make their own games, um, upload them, share them with others, uh, so there's an editor built in right into the game. And we've just uh, launched the beta um, uh, this Monday. And we've already had more than 100 games uploaded by people wow. now who tried it out, try a little prototyping, or maybe they have designed a game in the past, uh, uploaded a digital version of it now. So that's really a big focus, not only enabling players, but also enabling creators to really share their work as easily as possible. Um, one other feature we have is uh, VR support. Um, you can, you don't have to, uh, but you can, uh, if you do have a, a virtual reality setup, you can use that to play and also play with people who, who are not using that uh, together. So uh, Tabletopia and Board Game Arena, um, you know, have uh, web um, interfaces, they have, you know, um, apps that are kind of browsers that are bundled. Mm -hmm. It sounds like um, Tabletop Playground is just the desktop app there's no web yes, component, correct? that's correct yeah um, so when you go into play though is it um do you have like a virtual table that you kind of mess around with like you know physics wise or because it seems mm -hmm. like tabletopia and board game arena are a little more like um app based or web interface based necessarily yeah that's true so you you do have a 3d table that you sit around um and you have a full physics uh, support there so you can really um like on a real table the game doesn't enforce any kind of rules, at least uh, if people don't build that in via scripting, which is possible as well. But these early days, people just upload essentially, you know, their 3D models, their uh, their images, and then you have cards, you have game pieces, and so on, and manipulate them on the physical table. Great. Uh, so you know, the key question there, I think, as Paula pointed out, is that she is the person who likes to tie game components to each other and mess with the game while somebody else is playing, um, mm -hmm. probably flip a table or two. Uh, so, you know, are, are those the kind of exciting features we can look forward to when we play a game on, on tabletop yeah. playground with Paula? That's that's all possible, <laughs> definitely. And uh, in our tests, we've seen that people have very different approaches to that. So some people like to stay, you know, very, very regular where they want to follow their rules and others, yeah, they're more, uh, let's say, experimenting with uh, with the physics and with all the things you can do so uh, sounds, uh, sounds like very some free of the to you how chat. you want to use it great sounds like some of the people in chat are, are very excited to try out tabletop playground um yeah uh, we're so also excited Paula. to try tabletop playground exactly we do <laughs> yeah yeah we've signed up for hey. the beta you know <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, actually, I just signed up uh, while he was talking, so yeah. Hey, um, look at that. We're driving two more users. And I, I have a question. I was going to say one thing about a... Tabletopia <laughs> that, uh, that I noticed you're just talking about whether or not it feels like a physics sandbox or an app. I feel like um, in my experience in what I've been interacting with is mostly Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. Um, mm -hmm. And I can speak if we want at some point a little bit about how Tabletop Simulator works, not from obviously a, a developer standpoint, but from mm -hmm. a user standpoint, how I navigate my way through that. But where something like Tabletop Simulator and it sounds like Tabletop Playground is very um, physics sandbox, you're really doing everything yourself. Tabletopia, I feel like meets kind of in the middle in my experience of just app based and kind of a sandbox feel like when I pick up. So the other day I was playing Santorini 
when I pick up a piece and set it down, like you can feel the little, the weight of it. And you can feel almost like you're manipulating those pieces and you're picking things up and you're stacking them in a way that once you get used to it, you can kind of trick yourself into feeling like you're almost actually touching them. So there is, I just think Tabletopia meets that nice, like in the middle, kind of of that app and physics kind of playground. But Tabletop Simulator, definitely, it feels very, you can heal, you drop a piece. I can pick up when I'm playing, for example, when I'm playing with Matthew Jude and we're in Tabletop Simulator, I can, if he makes me mad, I can go pick up his pieces and throw them off the table, just like I would in real life. Um, and they fall to the floor, but they they come back to the table magically, which is nice. Uh, that uh, Amusingly, that reminds me of one of the things that I love the most about the Carcassonne app on Xbox. I don't know who's played it, but your little meeple um you can just keep tapping on your meeple and it will just kind of like click back and forth and they did a really good job of getting the sound of wood clacking on cardboard mm. um so like sometimes it's the little touches that are really really important yeah um so uh, speaking of for paula um matthew is in chat and had a question for you i'm not sure if you saw oh, asking gosh. you what you look for in a board game platform like are there general features that you as a player um uh you know want to see or or make your game better yeah i think i this is a great question i feel like something that feels that does feel a little bit like uh for me personally a mix of i'm not playing a computer game but it has it's doing a little more of the work for me than if i were to actually pull out a physical copy of the game and set it up it's nice when there is a script involved where i can go hey there are three of us playing set up and it just goes <laughs> and all the cards deal out and then i'm like cool i didn't have to deal with setup but then i'm still the person going but i am going to go over to this deck and i'm going to use my little pointer and i'm going to pick up the card and i'm going to flip it over and i'm going to pull it into my hand and then i'm going to and it makes a sound like a <laughs> sound when I pick up a card. Mm -hmm. So I really like, for me, platforms that marry those two things. And it is nice. He also, he mentions here about video chat integrated. Um, mm -hmm. It is nice when there's at least like a voice chat integrated into the platform. I don't have to open up a separate platform, but I can also see how that could, could possibly affect performance. And it's, you know, potentially easy enough to also open up a Skype call or a Discord on another device if you have more than one. But it is nice if a platform is able to run the game in a way that looks, you know, it has the art from the game. It looks like the game. Um, mm -hmm. That also allows me to have like a video chat or a voice chat in the platform while I'm playing. I do think those things are nice. Um, and also, I think something that's really important is an a game library browsing system that is easy to interact with. Is it easy for me to figure out what games are on your platform? Because if it's not, I'm not going to use it. So that would be another thing for me. That's my answer. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, so can if, I if add else, one one please. one little thing from my side? Uh, for me, definitely, as a gamer, from a gamer perspective, it is very important to be able to mess with your meeples yes. while uh, your opponents are taking turns. Uh, it is the great thing about like the downtime. For example, if you are playing, there are five of you, and each turn will take like five minutes. I want to be able to stack my meeple <laughs> into the column. I want like to drop it on my cards and then to back bring it back or I want to make like a perfect stack. And, and that would be my goal uh, while I'm waiting for my turn to come I back. I could do that, I could relate too. So yeah, I agree. <laughs> One person, meta game is really important. I, I feel like we're all admitting our inner goblin uh, here where we just want to mess with our own meeples and mess with other people's meeples. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm probably going to lose. There is no game. reason to, to get something. these fancy meeples like. <laughs> So um, the, I think the other question that I might have for platforms in general um, is just to review that uh, I believe both Board Game Arena and Tabletopia, you have a, uh, a free tier, but you also have a subscription tier and you don't pay for individual games in that library. You pay for a subscription to access to it. And Tabletop Playground, we you have. Go ahead. Uh, we have this option on Steam. On Steam, we sell some games as DLCs, uh, the mm -hmm. same as on Tabletop Simulator. And uh, that is because 
uh, we got lots of feedback that uh, f from people who do not want to sign up for the subscription, but they want to earn a specific game, uh, okay. to own a specific game. So we've implemented this as a feature. I think we have something like 15 games that you can buy one time for the whole life. And uh, as the physical copy, uh, when you buy a DLC for $5, uh, you are able to invite your friends to play with you for free. Uh, and you can even play this game from your web browser, but not from a Steam uh, for free as well and invite friends as well. So it's kind of a hybrid, but in sure. general, it is subscription system with free and paid accounts. Uh, and so then Tabletop Playground uh, is in beta now. Um, so you said that the beta is free. When it does launch, do you know what business model you will be supporting? So we know that we won't do a subscription-based model. We will have this one-time cost for the app itself and mm -hmm. then um, access to all the free content that players have generated. And we're mm -hmm. also talking at the moment to some publishers uh, of board games or people that are um, creating these um, professionally. Um, but we still have to figure out what the exact model there will be. And the most likely one would be, though, um, paying per, uh, per game. Yeah, so that sounds very much like a uh, tabletop simulator, basically. Yeah, yeah, similar okay. to that. Cool. So like the, I think the point that I just want to drive home to anybody who's viewing is that, you know, depending on what kind of approach you are comfortable with, um, there is a platform out there that's going to allow you to, to play kind of the way that you want to play. So even if you tried out one and you're like, you know, that's just not for me and that's not how I want to. I don't want to rent my board game library, for example. Um, you know, you can go buy individual games. Or if you're like, I buy the physical games, I don't want to buy them. I want to kind of get a sample of everything. You can do that too. Um, so the we've been talking a lot about platforms and you know, Tabletopia versus this other platform or whatnot. And it occurred to me when I was putting the agenda together that I don't think that's how a lot of players approach playing a game. Um, like, I don't think most people think I'm going to go to this store and buy their stuff. Um, you know, they might have their favorite local gaming store, but in a lot of cases, people are looking to buy a particular game. They're looking to play a particular game or something like that. So to kind of give people some perspective on that, um, I figured we would go through some of what we would kind of consider hardcore games or really popular games to let people know some of the variety of games that are on these different platforms. So I put together a list of games that I thought were prominent. Um, I snuck one or two of my personal favorites in there. Um, <laughs> but I figured, why don't we start? Um, do any of you want to mention some of the games that you most enjoy playing on these platforms, whether it's your own platform or somebody else's or whatever, but what are some of the games that you most enjoy playing online, either because you love the game or because you love the online experience? <laughs> from from my point of view, I'm sorry to say that, but I prefer to play Terra Mystica and Tabletopia than on board game area. Sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, well, sure. So, so uh, Terra Mystica <laughs> is one that you would note. Yeah. And that, that is available on both Tabletopia and yeah. uh, Board Game Arena. Exactly. And I feel, I feel like he's suggesting, Ivan, that maybe you want to say what you would prefer to play on this platform <laughs> so that you're even. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that I really like the, the way they did it on Tabletopia. So it's, it's way much more convenient than the version we have. We are still working on it, but yeah, I prefer to play on. I have to play it on uh, Tabletopia, so I have no shame to say it. Great. Well, I mean, like, that's... that's very kind of you <laughs> to mention that uh, <laughs> you enjoy this game on Tabletopia. <laughs> to be honest, I played just a couple of games on Board Game Arena. I, I, for me, it was just uh, an experience uh, of creating a new account, uh, Finding, I love the way how you organize the learning curve uh, when you drive uh, a new user from step by step. Uh, it is very well done. Yeah, that's, that's, thank you, but I, I think we are going out of focus <laughs> right now. 
<laughs> tabletop yeah look, look like very nice too so but uh, yeah just just <laughs> just keep the board game i like you even no problem about that <laughs> but yeah I, I on the game as i'm i'm currently playing it's like the, um uh, i really like the um carcassonne really, really one of my favorite and i really like to enjoy it on board game arena and one of i didn't know if you have like the cold express uh cold express yeah, yeah sure. cold Express, because there is an app uh, that is like quite good but i pr i really like to play it online on board game arena and uh yeah uh many more board games the main problem the main the, the main problem for me uh, like for the players and the users is like where could i play this game or is this game like uh, am i able to have this game and we have the, uh, the problem sometimes with some users that are just asking why don't you have this game uh, you have to answer every time like it's not that easy like because we have to manage the rights uh contact the publisher develop the app so it, you cannot have every board game on your website so you have to make choices and sometimes the choices you make them because you really want the as a game to come to your platform and sometimes uh people ask so much for you to to have it so you're kind of obliged to do it so the main problem for me is that there is no website that is actually um uh showing which games are available on which platform which would be really helpful actually i'm kind of surprised that board game geek doesn't have a, a section for listings that would uh, link to where you could play that online i i totally agree and another thing would that would be totally perfect is that is to be able to have your uh games results on your account on the board game geek directly from the website could be quite easy to do but mm, not our job <laughs> i think i have seen a thread somewhere on board game geek with a full list though for, it will come. It for will board come. game arena for tabletopia <laughs> yeah. so not official but some people on the forum seem to yeah. try to catalog it. it 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 will come in the end but yeah it's just a matter of time i, I guess so uh ivan what about you um what are some of your favorite games to play like you talked about the experience for new players on board game arena but what do you actually like to just straight up play online i um, play yeah, yeah. I think it, it's now my turn <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, to talk yeah, about games. Uh, on Tabletopia, I like uh, Euro games. I like Viticulture by James Stegmaier. Uh, for me, it's almost like a perfect game. And I prefer this type of he even heavier games. I like Lisboa by Vital Lacerda. Uh, I like Vinyos. Uh, I like Kanban. I like all the games by Vital, <laughs> actually. Um, and talking about, I think it is also worth mentioning that on each platform, I think there are games that we hope to get, but we still don't. For me, it is uh, Fest of Odin. I love Fest of Odin. I would love to have it on Tabletopia. I, I will also love to have it on Board Game Arena to be able to play it there, even if it mm -hmm. won't, be able, won't be available on Tabletopia. It's such a great game. Are you talking so, about Fist, Fist from Odin, the game from uh, Juve Rosenberg? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, it's such yes. a good game. Such a good game. I love the puzzle mechanics that is involved. It's so good. So Robert, what what about you? What do you most like to play online? Mm -hmm. So I have to admit that uh, recently I've been so involved in getting ready for for launch and uh, getting everything set up that really, yep. whenever I had the choice between playing online or uh, developing, I went for the second one. <laughs> In general, um, I do like games with a lot of rules with complex systems. Um, Originally, uh, in the beginning, the idea actually for, for something like Tabletop Playground came from me playing games like Warhammer, uh, so miniature wargaming uh, with my friends, and I didn't find anything online that could replicate mm -hmm. that experience. Um, so I'm really hoping for, even now there's not much in that space yet, yep. um, that we're going to see. I have that challenge that too, so, so I'm right there with you. Yeah, so I hope that um, we do now, we have the technical capabilities, we have the systems, um, 
hopefully in the coming years, we'll see more of that as well. Sure. Uh, so what about you, Paula? Um, you've played a number of games on This Game Gets Dicey on our show. Um, mm -hmm. I know you've played more before that. What are a couple of your favorites and where do you prefer to play them? Yeah, so I really am like, where is the game? That is the platform I will go to. Um, mm -hmm. I My first uh, experience with playing online was with Tabletop Simulator. And um, I've started more and more finding games on Tabletopia. And what's nice is the if you can get the user interface for tabletop simulator you can figure out everything else uh so this is a bit of a tangent but i will say if you try know that it, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve or how you're going to navigate yourself through these systems but you just keep at it because you'll start to pick it up you'll start to realize oh i'm w moves me forward you know a moves me on the keyboard a moves me to the side oh i right click to do this oh if i hit r it'll shuffle the cards or whatever so just stick with it. You'll get it. It just takes a minute. Um, so when I first started playing games online, I felt like I needed to stick with really simple like card games. You know, I was playing like Lost Cities and Targi, which I love. I still love. I've only ever played Targi online. I've never played it in person. And I love it. It works great. Um, and I played Carcassonne and things like that. They were like, oh, this is easy. Castles of Mad King Ludwig. I'm just flipping a tile over. I'm moving a thing. The What I need to do to interact with this system is simple. But we've started feeling like much more confident to be able to try games that are more like what I play in real life. I play a lot of like dungeon crawler miniature based games and be like, oh, now that I know how this works. I can dive into something where there's much more of a setup or where I need to be rolling dice or actively moving, you know, my piece, you know, uh, this is still a simple card game, but uh, the other day we played wingspan on our stream. And I, at first I was like, well, we have to like roll dice in that game. Is that going to be weird? But it really isn't. You just select the dice and you hit roll. And then it does a little thing where you watch it roll and then you see what you get. So, I really like a variety of things. And I, I say all this to say that if you are feeling kind of intimidated by the idea of playing something complicated on one of these online platforms, I was too. So start simple, start with a simple card game where you're just flipping things over. And then once you get the hang of how the system works, then be like, oh, well, I can play, you know, some minis heavy game. I can play something that is like, um, you know, Lisboa that has this massive board and all these things to look at. Um, yeah, so don't let that intimidate you. Start small if you want, start simple, and then dive into those those things that have more moving parts to them. I think that's a that's a good point, and I think it points to why Carcassonne, I think, is mm -hmm. one of the really popular app-based yeah. games. Like Carcassonne and Ticket to Ride are both very basic games. We all get them, and I think they were translated very, very well to kind of a digital environment, and they, they make us very comfortable. Um, go ahead, again. Yeah, the, the 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 fact is, if I if I remember it right, um, it, it, there was a download code uh, when you buy the um, ticket to ride uh, box. You had a code inside yeah. to download the app, right? Is there that... might have been like I think the last the last copy of Ticket to Ride I bought was like the twentieth anniversary or tenth anniversary or whichever one came with the cool little huge trains. Um, so I don't I don't know what they're selling in the in the current one, unfortunately. But it sounds familiar. I think at least a couple have that. Yeah, there was a code inside that really helped them uh, having the app like go very high in sales. Yeah. So the other thing that you mentioned, Paula, that I kind of want to highlight um, is that you know you have a show each week where you're playing a game online. Yeah. But it doesn't sound like you are an old hat at this. Like you're not a veteran of the the digital wars or anything like that. You are getting used to and learning a lot of these games like like everybody else kind of is. So, you know, it sounds like the show would be a good one to watch conveniently on our channel, but yes. uh, a good one to watch uh, if people are trying to get that comfort level too. Absolutely. Come check it out because you'll see that like Matthew and I are also, as much as we've played games, I mean, we've been playing games together through these platforms for months and months before the show mm -hmm. even started, because even before we were all kind of stuck in our homes, Matthew and I, for example, couldn't play games together in real life mm -hmm. because, like you said, we live eight hours apart from each other, like in a time zone, you know, and many more hours than that in actual travel time. So this was how we could 
play games together. Um, but there is, you know, we're, we're still figuring it out too. I mean, the other day in my stream, what someone in the chat was like, oh, you know, if you hit this button, it'll do this for you. And I was like, oh, what? And so we're learning as we go as well, even though we've, we've got the basic hang of it. Um, there's always something to figure out. So don't, if you want to come see just some normal people playing some games uh, and feel like, yeah, this is accessible. I can do this. Um, you should, you should just come, come watch our stream, get a feel for kind of how it looks, how it works. Um, it might even be interesting at some point. Normally we try to be logged into the game when we start our stream, but I wonder if it wouldn't be worth at some point not doing that, being like in the main page of whatever system we're using and then be like here's how you actually load this game here's the process and then people could see that too so that might be a thing we'll think about doing show you a little peek behind the curtain a little bit to walk sure. you through how you even get into the game so we've had a couple questions come up in chat so why don't we just take a, a moment to address some of those so first uh, mr square peg had a question for robert uh, they wanted to know whether you are planning on supporting the tilt 5 ar headset I think uh, there was a big Kickstarter project recently, if I mm -hmm. recall correctly. <laughs> yeah, I know about that one. Um, I would love to support it. I think with the VR support, we already have some systems that go into that direction. So it looks like it should be possible in principle. Um, but I can't really tell it yet. So we're waiting for, for them to release first. And then we'll have a closer look of uh, yeah, how possible it is. So another question from... Oh, I, I have a point about Tilt 5. Uh, sure. We are co collaborating with Tilt 5 and Tabletopia games will be available on Tilt 5. Awesome. Cool. That's Great. cool. So uh, Big ZGC has a question, uh, I think for everybody. Uh, this is kind of a, a, like a platform kind of game opinion. Uh, with, without face-to-face -face interaction, how do you think bluffing games play online? Um, do you think it's better, worse, different, you know, like Coup, mm -hmm. Bang, those kinds of games? How do you feel that those play online? Uh, Ian, sounds like you're excited. So why don't you go first? Uh, I'm always excited, you know, even when, <laughs> especially, when, it's especially when it comes to the bluffing games, because I really like them. The fact is that as of bluffing games are most of the time quite short and they involve a lot of bluffing, but actually there is no problem playing poker online. There is no problem also um, using like the um, VR headset, like I'm using a HTC Vive right now, uh, not, not right now, but right there, to play um, Poker Star online. And it works really well. And sometimes I just use my app on my phone. I think it's it's just different, like really different. Like you can have a chat talk, you can even turn on your, your webcam, sometimes the sound, sometimes even with, now, with nothing. It's like the main difference is like when you play with some clever people at a table, you have to guess it. Uh, you, you can see it directly, but online you have to guess who is really dumb and who is really clever around the table. So that's kind of like helping some people that are not very good at bluffing <laughs> and that is like easier for the very good one at bluffing, I guess. So doesn't matter a lot to me. Like, I mean, it's just different. For me, yeah. uh, I would say that if you want, you know, like Ian is saying it, it is different to not have that in-person interaction. And if you still want to replicate that feeling as much as possible, I would say that if the platform allows you to do in-game chat, have that on, have a microphone or a headset or something you can use so that you can be talking to each other. And if you don't have any of that stuff, what you can also do is, so I have a group that plays a game together. We try and get together and play a game online and we use like our phones and we'll pull up Skype or something like that on our phones so that we can still see each other and hear each other on another device while playing the game on our computers. And that makes a huge difference. And we feel like we're, you know, as much as you can, we feel like we're together. We're getting that interaction. You could do that bluffing or making faces or not making faces or like the things that you do in person on those things. So if you're able, if you have Obviously, this means you need multiple devices, but if you have a phone or a laptop and a gaming PC or whatever you might use, I think that that will go a long way to replicating that experience of a bluffing game or a social deduction type game or a collaborative game. 
Robert, I think, I think uh, either of you have anything you want to add? Yeah, what Ian said, uh, I mean, online poker is very, very popular, um, even without all of these additional clues. So often in bluffing games, you're really you're trying to figure out other people. And if you're playing with them at a table, you have all these clues of uh, what are they doing? What are they talking about? How it, does their face look? You don't have these clues uh, in many online contexts. Um, so you have to concentrate on the other ones. Um, and you have really to look more into what might this person be thinking based on how they're playing, um, which can also be very interesting. It's just a different experience, but it obviously from from the success online poker has um, is very, very uh, interesting as well. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to yeah, say to Robert's I would point. Say, that, oh, go, go ahead. Yeah, I would say that it depends on the goal uh, that you want to achieve. If you want to just have fun and you want this bluffing game to drive the conversation, uh, to drive the fun, uh, you have to have this Skype call or another video conference chat because uh, totally your goal is not to play the game. Your goal is to communicate with your friends and to chat around this, to play with all these things. And it is impossible to do without video. But if you want like to... Uh, nail your skills in uh, predicting things uh, with a limited number of clues, focus ties the thing. Uh, and uh, here is a nice addition is that when people are playing poker stars, for example, and they start to do it kind of professional way, they would be play at four or five tables at the same time because it is kind of boring. It is more about statistics. Uh, you see your hand, you understand your odds, ins and outs and you like uh, fold and so you need to play five tables at the same time uh, to be one successful to play the whole game uh, and all others you will fold all the time uh, but if you want to play poker with your friends it is also more about like uh, noticing some minor things uh, in behavior and some others it, it's just totally different games they still exist and it's okay. Uh, we all have different goals. We all like different things. Uh, but I think that these are different games. Bluffing game with video and without, these are totally different games. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. we totally agree each other, I guess. The only thing I, I would like to add is that in terms of, just in terms of game design, the game like uh, just turn, the, everything about the bluffing is like going through the time you you take to choose your card and play it, the time becomes way much more important. Way much more important when you play uh, online and without any videos or audio. It's mostly about the timing. Like, wow, he's taking a long time, short time, good player, bad player. Many different things come uh, come into play. But I I totally agree with Ivan, Paula, and Robert on that. Yeah, I, I would definitely say that some bluffing games, I think, will work better online than others. Because, uh, you know, to that point, the bluffing yeah. games that require or rely on the meat of that social interaction to provide the appeal of the game, and there's not a lot of mechanics there, um, and it's about the acting, and it's about the social engagement, I think those don't survive the translation as well. But the ones that do provide you a lot of actions that you can take, like I suspect that Secret Hitler, for example, because you have votes, because you have data to go on, um, it may be a, um, a better translation to go online than say werewolf, where especially in the beginning, you don't have any real concept of who to pick at first. Um, you know, so I think the, the you know picking the right yeah. bluffing game because I love this social de the deception games too. Picking the right game that has a lot of that has more rules for you to engage with to get information beyond people's behavior, I think, will will work better. Is that, is that something you're really yeah. interesting you're pointing out because, sorry. Good? Yeah, uh, keep keep going. I'll be the next one. Yeah, <laughs> just, just, just to talk about it, because we brought the werewolves on uh, the board game arena, and one of the things we had at the beginning was that, OK, people just go in and like talk together. and. People in online board games are not that talkative, like they talk a bit sometimes, but they have to have a starter. So we were thinking at first to have like a fake player joining the game. That should have been a bot, uh, ju bot just to, 
to be targeted by the players at first round. So that way, people get engaged and started to do that. That's but, really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but the main problem with that is that uh, it requires so much development because we have so, ma so many different language supports. So we just dropped the project. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. And yeah, we know like some, some of the games of werewolves are, aren't working at all. Some of them are just runes by some people just like, yes, I'm this, he's this. Like, okay. It's more like a way to have a interactive chat, uh, not totally to play the game like it's meant to be played. It's more like to have interactions while, while talking. So especially on Werewolf, you, you're totally right, Derek. Uh, Evan, sounds like you had something you wanted to add. Yeah, yeah. Just two hours before our stream, I was playing with my friends on Tabletopia. Uh, we were playing Hollywood. And after that, we were discussing like our favorite games and so on. And one friend of mine told me how they were playing Mafia. It is a werewolf style game on Zoom. And it took like a lot of management. They had almost like a dungeon keeper. So uh, in a Zoom, they had different rooms and there was a guy uh, who knew all the hidden roles all of all the players. And then uh, there is like a stage when every, everyone uh, should like uh, not see other people and only Mafia gets up and Mafia see each other and then they point uh, what citizen do they want to kill. And so this organizer will put these people to a separate video room so they see each other, they decide uh, whom they want to kill, he put them back to this room, and then like a doctor uh, will take a part and will select whom he wants to cure. So he put the doctor to a separate room, he shows whoever he wants to save, then he put it back, and it's like a management nightmare. <laughs> yeah, but like I think that does demonstrate how much we want to play these games that we yeah, we will totally. figure out ways to do them if we have to um so we are coming up on the end of our scheduled time so um you know oh, uh, no. I, kinda, I, I know yeah. i know right but i i want to be respectful for everyone for joining us so um why don't we uh, I, I figure one thing we haven't really covered is we've talked about platforms, but we haven't really talked about what hardware you need to access these things. Because um, I think that's something that people might also assume is that I don't have a computer that's fast enough to run this stuff. Um, so why don't we spend our last couple of minutes maybe talking about um, maybe oh, minimum, man, yeah, like minimum hardware requirements, but then also... Um, you know, recommended or additional tools that any of you would recommend that you play with um, that might enhance your experience. Like just as an example, Paula is clearly on her, her couch. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so she's playing from her couch. Yeah. Uh, I imagine that, you know, that makes you feel a little more comfortable or like it's a little more like a board game than maybe sitting at your desk. So um, can everybody maybe talk about some of the basic requirements for their platform and then okay. one or two things they would recommend people use? Okay, I, I could start if you want. Easy. I, I will drop the bottle instead of drop the mic. <laughs> any, anything that run, uh, any terminal that, that could run any web browser. So you're telling me Netscape. <laughs> Netscape works? You told me I, any browser. Netscape, no, please. <laughs> up to date. At least, you, at least you have to be up to date. But anything from okay. PS4, like, like phone, like even your iPhone two or three could work on it. Like, yeah, pretty much everything. Like, yeah, pretty much everything. And what about Google Chrome with one hundred tabs? Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just like try to be kind, please try to be kind. <laughs> One uh, game uh, for, for table. Yeah, for tabletop, it's a bit more complicated uh, than just a browser. Uh, I'm playing. I have two laptops uh, at home, uh, so I'm playing from my MacBook 2015. 
uh, and it's working pretty well. And I have like a new one that runs it's even better. Um, uh, in general, on Steam, we have like basic recommendations. I, I, I would say that if your laptop is like three, four years old, uh, it will run it okay. Uh, if it is a PC, it's even better. Uh, for iOS and Android, we run on tablets. Uh, I do not exactly remember from what generation. I think from iPad 3 or something. Um, it, it is also like if it is three or four years old, it, it will be pretty good. Uh, I also recommend, I usually recommend to use Zoom. Uh, Zoom is my tool of choice because... If you want to stream, if you want to live stream uh, your gaming session, it is easier to uh, set up OBS with Zoom, with standalone application like Zoom or, or something like this, or Skype. Uh, but uh, for Google Hangouts, it's a bit more complicated. But if you are just playing with friends, Google, ha Google Hangouts is uh, much easier. You can just schedule uh, your gaming nights and everyone an invitation and it will automatically create in your Google Calendar a link uh, to the Google Hangouts. Um, so that's all from my side. What about you, Robert? For Tabletop Playground, well, the uh, hardware requirements, I guess, would be similar to Tabletopia, maybe a bit higher since the graphics are a bit more modern. Um, but mostly, I also have a 2015 MacBook that I use uh, sometimes when I'm on the road. So that works as well. Um, so I think it's in a similar ballpark, except Wait, if you want to... I just realized do... I'm I'm on a 2015 MacBook right now. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, it's a I feel like we just got a hat trick. <laughs> um, if you want to use virtual reality, then you definitely need a more powerful machine, but that's always the case for, for virtual reality. Um, yeah, you won't buy HTC Vive for your MacBook uh, yeah, 2015. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, in terms of platform, one thing, uh, or, or of other tools, um, one thing that I would really recommend is Discord. Um, so this is a, an online chat platform that also supports uh, audio and video chat and is usually organized around communities. So we have one um, for Tabletop Playground where we interact with players and all the other platforms also have um, very popular Discord channels. And then there's other um, Discord servers based on particular games, for example. So you can really find your community of people who are interested in similar things, and you can find people to play with using Discord and then directly connect on that server with them, go into the audio chat, into video chat even. So that's really, really helpful. Yeah, we were talking about Discord before the stream. Or, uh, and um, uh, I think something that I mentioned that maybe we're trying to, trying to you know, uh, talk about on the stream is that making a Discord just for your gaming group um, may also be helpful uh, because it it replicates some of that feeling of hanging out in the space mm -hmm. independent of whatever game you're going to play. So, you know, if you decide you're going to play on a given night and you're going to play through multiple games, possibly through multiple platforms, uh, I do personally find it very helpful to have a party or a central kind of conversation space that's independent of that. So I'd recommend that too. And um, you can do voice calling and video calling through mm -hmm. Discord, and it's actually it's very it's pretty easy to set up. So it sounds like an intimidating thing. Oh, I need to set up a server on Discord, but it's really you just get get a Discord account and you just like hit a plus button. You name the community. You send a link to people to invite them. You're in. It's much easier than it sounds like. I, I have that's not how I felt about it. <laughs> we have something way much more easier. Like you, you, you on board game Arena, you just click on a webcam and ta-da, it happens to for everybody at the same time. No need for anything else. But yeah, I agree. I already use uh, like uh, Discord and Skype too. So yeah, that's okay. <laughs> uh, so Paula, though, um, what additional tools have you found or technology or software or whatever have you found that kind of enhance your game playing guide? Yeah. So if I'm thinking about not streaming, because streaming, it is a different beast, because uh, after we don't need to go into it. It's a different beast to stream it. But if you're just playing with people, you really can play in a lot of different ways, which I think is a thing. We, we sort of mentioned it earlier, but good to note. So when I'm playing, for example, on Tabletopia, I prefer on my PC, which is a gaming PC, I prefer to do it through Steam. 
I like the Steam app for it. So I will do that. But when Matthew is playing the game with me on Tabletopia, he's playing it in his browser because he prefers how that functions on his computer. So, and we can play the same game. So we don't need to be in the same system to make that work. Um, something to think about in your browser, if, you, if the website you're in works, but the game won't load, you might want to go into settings and check hardware acceleration on that setting because it might not be loading because that's not checked and that needs to be checked to render kind of the 3D assets of the game. So mm -hmm. I was having trouble getting something to load in a browser. I went and I changed that setting. Now the game loads in my browser. So that's something for you to think about. And then, like I said, I really like so in Tabletop Simulator, there is an in system chat function that you can either toggle on and off when you want to chat or have it always on. Uh, so I use like a gaming headset like this where I hear the other people. I talk into my little microphone. I find that really handy. And I have a good time in Tabletop Simulator or something like that without my webcam because I can hear them talking. A game where I feel like I want to see everyone else, I prefer to pull up um, using whatever your video chat software of choice is, Skype, Zoom, Google Hangout, being able to pull that up, preferably for me on a separate device, but you could have them on, on the same device, just in Windows. Um, and then you can see everyone and you can play your game. If your computer, I don't know enough about computers to tell you what tech specs you need, but if your computer feels like you can handle that, then I do like having that, so. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I just wanted to thank all of you for joining us. Um, I really appreciate all of you giving us the time to kind of talk through how to play some of these games online. I hope that we have inspired some people who may have been reticent to take their, their game night online to do so during this quarantine so they can still get their kind of game fix in. We did have other stuff on the agenda uh, that we didn't have time to get to. So maybe we will have all of you back at some point to cover the rest of it. Um, but again, thank you very much. Thank you to everyone for watching. Don't forget that we have um, the Brothers Murph play board games together on Monday night. Uh, they paint minis on Wednesday morning uh, at 9 a.m. Pacific. And then at 11 a.m. Pacific, that's when Paula's show comes on. And yeah. She and Matthew will play a game online. So you can, again, kind of see a lot of what we've just been talking about mm -hmm. in action. And then 4 p.m. on Wednesdays, we have Fireside with Peter Ackeson, where he currently this season is interviewing people who were there during the conception and kind of proliferation of Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition. So if you love that history of gaming, that's a really, really great show to watch. Uh, and then Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m., we have Westgate Irregulars, which is a group of local authors who all play D&D together. And then back on Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, we have Table Takes, where we talk about news, Kickstarters, um, special topics that have come up, things of note in the, the hobby over the past week. And then we usually have a special topic stream like this one at 3.30 Pacific uh, shortly after Table Takes. So thank you again for joining us, everybody. Thank you to my guests. Thank you to viewers. Remember to uh, follow and check us out later. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.